Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Dzień dobry, no już po dziewiątej. Mam nadzieję, że jesteście gotowi do zajęć. Rozpoczynamy tydzień i rozpoczynamy dzień. Dzisiaj jest oczywiście poniedziałek, no i mam nadzieję, że zwarcie i gotowi jesteście do nauki. No dobra, rozpoczynamy od języka angielskiego dla uczniów klas pierwszych liceów ogólnokształcących po gimnazjum. Jest z nami już pan profesor Maciej Doksa. Dzień dobry, witamy bardzo serdecznie. Dzień dobry. Rozpoczynamy, panie profesorze. Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about renting a place. Uh, this is one of the things that you probably will have to do when you go abroad and you want to stay uh, there for a longer time. You have to live somewhere. So uh, you have two options. Either you will um, buy a flat or a house or any other place to live, which is quite expensive, or uh, which is more probable you will have to rent a place for yourself. So today we will talk about renting a place. Now, what kind of places can you rent? Well, the first ones are the most obvious ones, the, the ones that we most commonly rent. So you can rent a flat or an apartment in a block of flats. Generally in Great Britain, in British English, uh, we call mieszkanie, we, say, we call it a flat. In America, they uh, prefer to use the word apartment. You have to be careful, apartment usually doesn't mean uh, the same as Polish apartament, because when we say apartment in Polish, that usually means very large, luxurious flat, usually uh, in a hotel. Uh, but in English, this is not really called an apartment, this is called a, a suite of rooms. But flat apartment is what we call mieszkanie. And uh, they are usually not always located or situated in blocks of flats, uh, czyli w blokach uh, mieszkalnych. Uh, when the flat is really small, I mean there is usually one uh, room in it, plus a kitchen or kitchenette, uh, then we call it a bedsit or a studio flat, which means in Polish kawalerka. It's a very small flat that, uh, for example, single people prefer to rent uh, and so on and so on. The next uh, place uh, is condo. Condo is really uh, more or less the same thing as a uh, uh, flat or apartment. This is an American word. It is mostly used in America, in Canada, generally in North America. And it means, as I said, it means more or less the same as the flat. Uh, there is just one small difference. Condos are flats or apartments that we tend to buy rather than rent. So, uh, but basically it also means mieszkanie. The next place uh, which we may want to rent, uh, especially if we have a big family or we want to share it with other people, with friends, is a house. There are different types of houses that you can uh, rent, that you can live in. Uh, the first one, probably the most typical one, is a detached house. Detached uh, in Polish, uh, generally it would mean odłączony. So what does it mean odłączony dom? Well, this is what we call dom wolnostojący. So it, it is a house which is not connected in any way to any other house. It's just freestanding building. Uh, so this is what we call a detached house. Uh, sometimes houses, two houses uh, or, or two living units are connected into one building. And then uh, in English, this is called a semi-detached house or 
especially in America, in American English, it can be called a duplex. Um, what is interesting, a duplex uh, can be two houses uh, connected by one wall or it can be two living units, like two flats, uh, one on top of uh, another. So uh, upstairs and downstairs. But generally, when we say semi-detached house or a duplex, we mean uh, two buildings connected by one wall. So in Polish, uh, this is usually called bliźniak. Um, another type of house that you may want to rent, especially if you go to Great Britain, because in Great Britain these are quite popular, are uh, terraced houses. What is a terraced house? Well, terraced house is a house which is connected usually to two other houses on both sides. So they, have, uh, they share uh, a wall on either side of the house and it's usually a row, jante, a row of houses connected together. Uh, there is a small difference between uh, a terraced house in Poland and a terraced house, for example, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, in Poland, terraced houses tend to be uh, the new types of buildings in some um, uh, new residential areas, housing estates. Uh, uh, however, in Great Britain, this used to be and still is a very popular form of uh, housing in cities. Uh, they were usually uh, built, for example, in the 19th centuries and uh, they were occupied by um, factory workers. So in England, they tend to be rather small. Uh, they have a small garden in the back with a little um, patio or terrace. That's why they are called terraced houses. Uh, in British cities, um, in the old quarters uh, of the town, they are really, really still popular. So this is what we call uh, Dom Szeregowy. Uh, in English, terraced house, because as I said, they usually have uh, a kind of terrace uh, in the back garden or in the backyard. If you like to live, if you like to live uh, in the countryside, you may want to rent a cottage. What's a cottage? Well, cottage is really a house in the country which uh, architecturally is like m typical house for the country. Uh, not very big, rather traditional with traditional design, traditional uh, architecture, materials. Uh, this is what we call domek wiejski, domek na uh, more traditional thing. Uh, so that's what we call a cottage. Uh, next one is a townhouse. Uh, what is a townhouse? Well, townhouse is usually uh, either a historical or like more traditional uh, building in the city center, usually in the historic city, city center. Here in Torun we have plenty of townhouses, historical townhouses. This is what in Polish is called kamienica. So it's usually a large house, usually uh, with uh, rented uh, space inside, rented uh, flats um, that are occupied by tenants, lokatorzy, uh, and as I said, uh, almost always they are historical buildings. So a townhouse means kamienica. And the last but not least by any means is a mansion. This is a place that everybody would like to live in. Well, probably everybody. This is posiadłość, rezydencja. So this is really a huge, luxurious, very spacious house uh, with a lot of area uh, around it, uh, probably with some, you know, uh, uh, nice garden, maybe a swimming pool and uh, something like that. So a mansion is, as I said, posiadłość, residencia. Not many people can afford to rent a mansion. Uh, usually the celebrities or very rich business people. All right. 
So when you have decided what kind of place you are going to rent or you can actually afford to rent, uh, it is um, necessary to decide in what kind of place, what kind of area you would like to live. Uh, so, uh, first of all, you may want to live in the city center or downtown. City center, well, we know what, we, what it means because it's almost like in Polish. Uh, downtown is actually the same as city center, but it's an um, American word. It's used in North America, in the USA, in Canada. So that means the heart of the city, um, the, the very center of the city where you have uh, the business uh, places, uh, where you have offices very often in America you have you know the, the tall buildings the skyscrapers or it can be also the historical uh, city center just like in Torin so it, it is called also downtown. Uh, some people prefer not to live downtown or in the city center because it's very noisy there is a lot of uh, as we say hustle and bustle to the Zgiełk i Wrzawa so they prefer to live in the suburbs. So the suburbs are those parts of the city, the uh, areas, uh, the districts which are um, situated around the city center. Czyli przedmieścia, the suburbs. We want to live in the suburbs. Further away from the city center we have the outskirts of the city. The outskirts of the city are the places which are situated uh, uh, almost on the like border between the city and the countryside. Uh, they are the most remote parts of the city. In Polish we call it obrzeża miasta, so on the outskirts. You can live uh, on the outskirts of the city. Uh, most people when they uh, live in a place uh, they choose an area called a uh, housing estate. A housing estate is a residential area which is full of residential buildings, so buildings uh, in which people live. Uh, so this is in uh, Polish it's called uh, osiedle mieszkaniowe, in English it's called residential estate, housing estate or just an estate. Uh, some people just don't want or can't live in a city. So they prefer to live in the country, which is also called a rural area. Rural means wiejski. So they don't like urban life, they don't like city life, they prefer to live in the country. So uh, the country is called a rural area. Czyli na wsi, na terenach wiejskich. No matter where you live, almost everybody wants to live in a convenient location. What is a convenient location? Convenient location is a place uh, in which it is very well convenient to live, wygodne, dogodne, to live, uh, but also to move around, to get to other places, so you have good uh, transport links, good roads uh, around you, you have a lot of uh, facilities, so places that you want to use. So this is what we call a convenient location or we may also say that a place is conveniently located, czyli dogodnie położone. So this is what uh, we usually want. Now when you have uh, chosen um, the general type of location, you want to think what um, kind of location it is, what, what it offers to you. So the first two things that you may think about are facilities or amenities. Facilities is the, all the infrastructure uh, around your place that you can use. So it could be transport links, so public transport. It could be uh, educational facilities like schools, universities, uh, uh, it could be things like kindergarten, it could be um, service points, health centers, so anything that you want to use. 
Amenities, well, amenities is basically a very similar thing to facilities. Udogodnienia, infrastructura, so this is also uh, shops, service points, recreational areas, um, uh, healthcare um, infrastructure. So generally everything you might want to use when you live in a place. And as I said, in Polish this is called infrastruktura, um, udogodnienia, uh, and so on and so on. And as I said, one of the most important things uh, in a location is whether it is close to transport links. Uh, transport links or public transport. What kind of uh, facilities uh, do we mean here? Well, bus stops or tram stops, tram, tramway, tramway. Uh, underground station. Well, there are actually three names for what we call metro in Polish. So in Great Britain, generally, uh, the term underground is used. In London, they also very commonly and colloquially call it a tube. A tube means rura. So, you know, the tunnel of the underground train, it, it is actually a tube. So, in England, well, in, in London, uh, they call uh, the underground the tube. In America, uh, another uh, term is used, uh, subway. So, one way or uh, the other, uh, you, want, you may want to live near an underground station or tube station or a subway station. For some people it is also important that they live in a quiet neighborhood. Neighborhood, so it's the general area around your house, sąsiedztwo, okolica. So quiet neighborhood is important for a lot of people. Uh, they don't want busy streets, they don't want a lot of noise, they don't want, um, um, you know, crowds of people walking around. Also, most people generally prefer to live or prefer living in a leafy area. L what does it mean? Well, leafy area generally means green area, full of trees, bushes, you know, f plants, uh, flowers and so on and so on. The name leafy area, of course, comes from the word leaf, liść. So, liściasta <laughs> okolica, that's what it's actually called in English, which uh, actually means uh, zielona okolica. Uh, as I said before, most people usually live in a part or section of a city which is called a residential area, czyli uh, tereny mieszkaniowe, dzielnica mieszkaniowa, residential district, residential area. Uh, most people don't want or they just can't live in an industrial areas. Now, the city, cities generally, by law, are divided into zones, strefy. And uh, mostly the zones are industrial zone or industrial area where you have factories, you know, um, companies and uh, warehouses. And you have then uh, residential areas. Uh, you can also have uh, some recreational areas like, you know, parks, uh, fields, uh, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, most people don't want to live near a busy street or noisy area because it can be, you know, a problem in the long run. However, there are those who uh, uh, like the hustle and bustle of the city. They like um, uh, living near the action, where the action takes place, so busy street, noisy area, may be their choice. All right, so uh, when you have already uh, selected the type of house and the location and the type of area you want to live in, the next thing is to uh, consider the surroundings of your house. So what is around the house? Well, let's suppose that you are going to live in a house, not a block of flats, but a house. So these are the things that you may find important and you may want to consider uh, around your house. So uh, it is um, sometimes um, important for some people whether the house has a yard or garden. 
Uh, in Great Britain, British English, they generally uh, call it a garden, so the area in front or in the back or around the house. In America, they prefer to call it a yard. Generally, ogród, podwórko, and so on and so on. So, you can have a, a front yard or front garden, or you can have a backyard or back garden. Uh, for some people, uh, especially if they have kids, it is uh, an important thing. The next thing that people really uh, want to have and want to have it nice is a lawn. What's lawn? Well, lawn is actually the grass. Yes, nicely, you know, cultivated, well taken care of grass. This is in Polish what we call travnik. So for some people it's extremely important. You see how, uh, you know, Mm, well taken care of some lawns are, people water them, people uh, cut the grass regularly. The next thing which is quite important is a uh, fence. So the fence is uh, what we call uh, uh, this is the uh, barrier that you um, build around your uh, um, garden, around your yard, around the house. Uh, the interesting thing is that in Poland we have this habit or tradition of putting a fence uh, almost always, almost around every house. So whenever there is a especially detached house or semi-detached house or uh, even uh, the, the modern terraced houses, uh, you almost always find a fence around it. So we have this tradition of separating from the outside world from the neighbors. What is interesting, and you may have seen it in American movies, in America it's just the opposite. Uh, in cities, in uh, housing estates, residential areas, when you have those semi-detached uh, houses, uh, they usually have no fence. Uh, it is rare, I would say, to have a fence. It's uh, usually an open space which is interesting. Uh, when you have a fence, uh, you may want to have a gate. Yes? So the gate is the door in a fence that you can uh, use to enter the property, czyli brama, bramka, a gate. Also, um, if you have a house and you have a car, you may want to leave the car somewhere or you may want to put the car in the garage. So there is this area which is usually in front of the garage which is called a drive. You can leave your car there or you can use it to uh, enter the garage or I don't know your kids can use it to uh, play there. Yes? In Polish a drive would be podjazd, podjazd do garażu. Uh, of course, every house has an entrance, so the door that you use to enter the house. Um, entrance is important because there are different types of entrances. Uh, they are those which are like more transparent, there are those which are more solid. So uh, it's always good to consider whether the house has a good entrance, big entrance, uh, convenient and safe. Uh, inside your garden or your yard, you sometimes create those little ways that you use to move around your area. This is called a path, a ścieżka. Yeah? So, uh, usually people have some paths. Uh, they can be paved, czyli wybrukowane, or they can be made of stone or concrete, beton, or they can be just uh, uh, beaten uh, paths, czyli takie udeptane, uklepane ścieżki. When people have a garden and they really like to take care of the garden, they need a lot of tools to take care of the garden, to do the gardening. They also need some tools for the house. So sometimes in the garden you will find this little wooden building, little wooden house that we call a shed. Well, in Polish there are different names for it. Um, it could be called szałerek, uh, szajerek, drewutnia, szopa. Okay, so uh, there are really different names in Poland uh, depending on the uh, 
on where you come from. And uh, another important thing which can be inside your house or it can be outside your house is a pavement. Pavement means Hodnik, so this is the place that you use to walk. So as I said, you can have a nice pavement inside your garden or yard or outside it. Pavement is a British term. In American English, they prefer to say a sidewalk, but it's basically the same thing. All right, now uh, let's move inside the house. When you're inside the house, you may want to know what kind of uh, places or rooms there are inside. Uh, the first uh, really interesting thing that we might want to discuss is the, the number of rooms. This is a quite interesting uh, thing. In Poland, when you talk about uh, the number of rooms in a flat or in a house, you usually mean uh, all the rooms apart from the kitchen, and uh, the bathroom and toilet or some, you know, utility room. But you usually mean the living room plus the bedrooms or any other rooms that you normally live in. And you, you know, give the number of them all. So, for example, in Polish, when you say mam trzy pokojowe, cztero pokojowe mieszkanie, it means that there is a kitchen, bathroom, plus these four or five rooms. However, in English, usually they only give, when they talk about the size of the flat, the number of rooms, they only give the number of bedrooms. So, uh, when you have a flat which has three bedrooms and a living room, in Polish you will say mieszkanie czteropokojowe, but in English they will say it's a three bedroom house or flat and uh, the living room is just uh, taken for granted. So we, we, we just uh, mean that there is a bedroom, uh, there is a living room apart from these three bedrooms. So this is interesting, yes, because they, they actually only count the number of bedrooms, meaning that there is always a living room in there. So it's like an extra room. All right, so what are Mm, the rooms that you may find in a house. First of all, there is a basement. The basement is this part of the house which is underground or partly underground. And uh, so in Polish we can call it uh, piwnica, suterena, uh, poziomy minus jeden, podziemie. Uh, so people call it different names. Basement is basically, as I said, underground or partly underground and it can be used for <clears throat> really a variety of purposes for you know different things so it can be used as a workshop warstadt it can be sometimes used as a gym it can be used as a normal living area so you may actually have a room there or rooms uh, it may be used as a cellar which is a place where you keep uh, old stuff, old things. It may be used as a utility room, which we will uh, also discuss today, which is a place where you keep tools, machines, you know, appliances for your house. All right, the next room is a bathroom or toilet. Uh, this is quite obvious and clear. It may be uh, combined in one room. It can be two separate rooms. A closet. This is an interesting thing. A closet is a usually little room, can be bigger depending you know on the size of your flat or house. And this little room is serves different purposes. It can be used to store some things. So it could be storage room, taka uh, It can be also used for clothes especially uh, people who live in a bigger houses or in a mansion. Uh, they have big uh, closets uh, where they keep their clothes or uh, shoes or, you know, things like that. Uh, so in Polish, a closet can be called uh, schowek, but it can also be called garderoba. 
depending on the purpose and size. Cellar. Cellar is uh, the place under the house where you generally keep uh, old stuff, uh, useless things, maybe some tools. Sometimes people keep there some, uh, for example, potatoes, some, some food that they store, like f uh, fruit and vegetables. So this is what we typically call pivnica. And, uh, it is used as pivnica, as a place to store things. The next room is a study. A study is a place where you usually have a desk and you, you, you use it either for actually studying, as the name suggests, or you use it for some uh, work. Um, I mean, usually some office work um, with a computer or documents, papers. So this is called a study in Polish that would be like Gabinet. An attic. Well, an attic is usually a place uh, just under the roof. And uh, an attic uh, can be a place where you also keep old things. You keep old stuff, useless stuff that you don't use uh, every day. Um, but it can also hold a room and then we call it an attic room and there you can actually live there. A lot of houses have attic rooms uh, where you uh, normally live is a place, is a part of the residential part of the house. The next one is a porch. Uh, a porch is this area in front of the entrance which is usually under the roof. Uh, in Poland, it's not that popular. It's incredibly popular in America. You probably have seen it in American movies. This is the place where people very often sit when they sit in front of the house. Uh, it's under the roof. They very often sit there, you know, uh, in, in, in movies. It's in the evening or at night and they discuss life. They talk about, you know, love and things like that. It usually takes place in the porch. In Polish that would be called ganek, veranda, uh, something like that. So as I said, in America it's a very, very common feature of a house, very popular thing. Kitchen or and the dining room. Could be two separate rooms, could be together, kuchnia, jadalnia, uh, that's obvious. A loft. A loft is a little bit like an attic. It's usually uh, situated under the roof, but the loft is typically used for keeping uh, old things, uh, useless things. It's usually small space, it's usually quite um, cramped, dusty place. Uh, you usually don't have a room there, a room to live. A living room, a sitting room. This is the main place in the house. This is where you spend your time. You sit on the couch, you watch TV, you uh, talk to people, you have parties, you, you just live there. Yes, you spend time there. A bedroom, you know, if in the house you have one bedroom where the owners or the parents sleep, this is called the master bedroom czyli sypialnia rodziców lub sypialnia właścicieli lub główna sypialnia. So it can be called different things, but it's the main bedroom where, as I said, the owners sleep or the parents sleep. And the last one, utility room. Utility room is a little uh, room, can be bigger, especially if it's in the basement, where you keep things that you use for, for example, cleaning the house, maintenance of the house, czyli utrzymanie domu. Very often you have some appliances there, like a washing machine or a fridge. Well, fridge maybe not, but washing machine, a dryer, uh, some tools. Uh, uh, so generally things that you use to maintain your house. Okay, and um, there are some words uh, that you may need when you want actually to rent a place. So, when you rent a place, you have to make contact with the owner of the place, owner of the 
flat or owner of the house. This person in English is called a landlord or landlady. If it's a man, it's called the landlord. If it's a woman, it's called the landlady. In Polish, właściciel mieszkania, właściciel nieruchomości. When you rent a house from a landlord, from a landlady, you are called a tenant. Czyli lokator, najemca is the person who rents the place and the person who pays the rent. When you do it officially, and it's better to do it officially, to rent a house officially, you have to sign a special document which regulates all the terms and conditions of the rent of the lease. And this is called lease agreement or tenancy agreement, which is umowa najmu. This is a very important document, as I said, it regulates all the uh, legal aspects of, this, uh, of renting a place. Uh, very often, uh, if you want to rent a place, you have to pay a deposit. What's a deposit? Well, deposit is just a sum of money that you have to pay. And if you finish living in the house, you will get it back. But if you destroy something in the house, if you create some damage, cause some damage in the house, this money will be used to cover the repairs of the house. To jest taki depozyt, czyli po polsku byśmy powiedzieli zabezpieczenie, kaucja. Of course, when you rent a place, you have to pay, well, you have to pay every month for renting it, and this money that you pay usually every month, sometimes every week, it's called the rent, czyli czynsz. When you pay the rent, uh, sometimes the bills are included in the rent, sometimes they are not. The bills are included means that rachunki są wliczone w czynsz. What bills? You know, water, electricity, gas, uh, I don't know, cable, TV, uh, heating, things like that. So sometimes they are included, sometimes they are not included. Also, you may rent a house which is empty, like there is nothing inside, because you have your own furniture. And this place is called unfurnished, czy nieumeblowane, but when there is some furniture inside, when there are some things inside that you can use, some uh, appliances, we say that it is furnished, czyli umeblowane. Now, as I said, when you rent a place, you have to pay the rent. If you don't pay the rent or you are not a good tenant, you create some problems, uh, you damage the property, you may be evicted. So, in other words, the landlord, the owner can kick you out of the place. To be evicted, zostać eksmitowanym. Okay, and as I said, uh, in English, when you rent a place and you talk about the number of rooms, you usually talk about uh, the number of bedrooms, not the total number of rooms. So you have to be careful about that. So two bedroom flat usually means that there are two bedrooms plus the living room. So actually three rooms. Uh, some flats or houses which are new, modern, they have the modcons. Modcons is a shortcut from modern conveniences, czyli nowoczesne udogodnienia, modern conveniences or modcons. Okay, and, and uh, the last thing, when you want to rent a place, you want to uh, very often call about the place. So these are some expressions that you may use in a telephone conversation when you rent a place. I'm phoning or I'm calling about the flat to rent. Dzwonię w sprawie mieszkania do wynajęcia. Is it still available? Czy ono jest wciąż dostępne? Is it furnished or is it fully furnished? Czy jest umeblowane? How much is the rent? Ile wynosi czynsz? Do I have to pay a deposit? Czy muszę wpłacić kaucję? Do I have to pay in advance? Czy muszę płacić z góry? Are the bills included? Czy rachunki są włączone? Where is the flat situated? Gdzie jest położone to mieszkanie? When can I see the flat? Ok. So, these are the things that you may know, you may want to know when you're renting a flat. So, I hope that this will be useful to you in the future. That's all from me today. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 
Bardzo dziękujemy i dosłownie po krótkiej przerwie zaprosimy klasę pierwszą LO po szkole podstawowej. Oczywiście Pan Profesor z nami zostaje. Zapraszamy Was serdecznie.